It's time again for the Centerville Town Election, and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with the three candidates who you'll be able to vote for on October 4th. I'm joined with Eric Johnson, another one of our candidates who will be running for town election in Centerville. And Eric, we have a lot of very important questions to get to, yes. but I want to hit you with the hardest one first. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. What's your favorite cookie? My favorite cookie? Okay, so my wife makes a recipe that I pried out of the hands of my grandmother, <laughs> and it's pumpkin chocolate chip. And it's, the texture is like halfway between a cookie and cake. And it is hands down the best cookie I've ever had in my life. That's all. I've never heard of that. I'll bring you some. It's re you're ready for the season, too. Yes, it's very good. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. All right. All right, we'll get into the real questions. <laughs> Why did you decide to run for council? Very, very good question. Um, it, it was a lot of deliberation, but it came after a very distinct period of time in my life. Um, I grew up in this town. Um, I went in the Air Force, moved back after many years because this will just always be home. And after about two years of being here, I was working for the county, and I was unexpectedly uh, ill with a, a kidney stone. And um, that should have been a very simple procedure. I went in for the, the thing they call lithotripsy, where they just pulverize it. Mm -hmm. And I should have been out like the same day, if not the next day. Um, but unfortunately, I had some health issues that were not fully diagnosed or treated from my time in Afghanistan. And uh, when I had the procedure, I came out, I had some, some really significant issues, was in the hospital. Um, it got to the point where I was too weak to walk, was in a wheelchair. At any rate, the, this wonderful, wonderful town, as it's always been, um, said lots of prayers. People brought in meals. People raised money to build a ramp in front of my house for, for the, the wheelchair. And um, after about six to eight months of thinking, gosh, this is just not getting any better. I need to start planning for, for, for the end here. Um, I, I had the right diagnoses and all these things sort of started coming together and made sense. And so as I got well, miraculously, and after feeling thousands and thousands of prayers, um, my wife and I literally got on our knees and said, okay, God, we need to get back in some way. And I didn't want to run for office at that point in time. But for three days after that, uh, interestingly enough, I had a couple friends and some folks I knew through work say, you know, have you thought about running for something? And so I thought, okay, so is, if that's the sign, and um, so we just kept thinking about it and uh, prayerfully considering it. And, uh, but that's, that's what got me in, into the race. So yeah. it was really just that desire to, to give back. And gotcha. uh, this, is, this is how I hope to do it. Right, and you touched on it right in the beginning what you just said, but how long have you now lived in Centerville? Gosh, so I've been back, um, it's going on uh, four years now. And then I spent from fourth grade until early adulthood living here. So, so over uh, 20, no. I can't do public math. <laughs> it feels like 20. It, I, all I know is I'm going to be here the rest, the rest of my life. This is, this is our permanent home. Gotcha. Okay. So what can you tell me about your background that would help people uh, decide? I'm sorry. What can you tell us about your background that would help make you a good candidate for local government? So I would have to say it's the diversity of my experiences. Um, I have tried to approach every job I've ever had from the vantage point of a, a dear uh, pen pal of mine. I met um, President George H.W. Bush when I was at Washington College and um, had the honor of being pen pals with him from that point on uh, until I went to graduate school, the, the school at Texas A&M University that bears his name. And it would be easy for me to sit here and say, well, I got a master's degree in public service and public administration at that school, so that's, that's why I'm prepared. Um, that education certainly helped, but it was really that program and him personally instilling in me this idea that public service is a mindset. And so he said, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a banker, um, if you put flower arrangements together every day, if you go to bed every night and you can put your head on your pillow knowing that you left the world a better place, then that's public service. So I've tried to approach every job I've ever had that way. And so being in the military, um, being a hospital administrator, uh, doing emergency management. It's all been about triage and trying to do more with less. And so I feel like those skill sets and just that mindset, um, that's how I, I'm best prepared, I think, for, for the position. Gotcha. And I, I feel like uh, that answer kind of leads right into our next question. What would be the three priorities you'd have if you were elected? Um, that's wonderful. Um, a lot of priorities. Um, the theme at the outset, I want to say, is um, I think the town is a wonderful place. So. I don't approach my campaign as there's a bunch of people screwing things up and I can do better. Mm -hmm. It's really, I think there's a lot of really awesome things going on and I think the, the potential of this town, the sky's the limit. Um, so that all being said, what I would like to see is an improvement on a good thing as follows. 
Um, the first thing would be, I, I think we need a capital investment plan for the, the town. Um, right now, each of the departments have a budget forecast that goes out about five years. Um, I've taken the time to tour our water treatment facilities, um, the infrastructure town-wide that includes our roads, our, our sidewalks, you name it. And when I add up in my mind the different expenses that are on the horizon, some are sort of not necessarily in the queue to be done, but as soon as we can get to it. Um, and then when you look at some of the capital items in the water treatment plants, you can look at a thing, and I was able to talk to the director of public works and say, okay, so that computer right there that helps decide what pipes to turn on, that kind of thing, what's the lifespan of that? Okay, that might be 20 years or that might be 10 years. Okay, well, when you start to look at all of this, we should be able to, in theory, map out everything for 20 to 50 years. And granted, that cone of uncertainty gets bigger as you go out in time. But in theory, if you keep looking at that document, we should be able to keep taxes flat and have the public feel a sense of confidence that we're investing their money well. So that's the first thing. The second thing is sort of goes hand in hand with that, and that's a financial report card. I really feel like at the end of the year, our citizens deserve a document as simple as it can be that just says, here are all the services that, that you pay for. Mm -hmm. And on a per capita basis for taxpayers, this is how much you're basically paying uh, for that service. So I'm just throwing out numbers here, but let's just say that um, each person's paying $200 for the police department. Well, if we add another column and you could say, okay, in a town of comparable size, money, you name it, maybe it's Chestertown, maybe we include Denton on there. If they're paying 500 for their police department and we're paying 200, well, we might want to look at that. Should we be paying more? Or for those folks out there that think we're paying too much, it just helps give them perspective. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is something that um, it, it's really been driven by the campaign trail. And that is the idea that people still don't feel like the road project's been put to bed. And no decision that is ever made by any elected official is perfect. I think we can all agree to that. And I know that I, I won't be perfect. I'll do my best. but. There were mistakes made, and it is still a source of animosity. When I ask people when I knock on doors, what are your priorities? And they're like, I just feel like there's been no accountability for the road project. And so I want to see something that doesn't necessarily involve any kind of witch hunt, or I, I feel like there were all these nefarious things done. It's really a matter of saying, in one page or less, military-style document that I bring from the Air Force, what happened, what didn't happen, what did we learn from it, and how are we going to not have this happen again? I've been told it's an every 100-year project. So we're a couple years now into the next 100 years. So how do we make sure 100 years from now or 98, whatever it is, um, this doesn't happen again? And so um, I've already gotten some of those questions answered on the trail. So the document's already half written, but that's something I'd like to deliver to the folks. Gotcha. All right, we're going to change gears a little bit. Would you be in favor of an arts and entertainment section growth in downtown Centerville? So I'm not only in favor of that, but I firmly believe that any town that seeks to be uh, vital, revitalized, in our case, we, we want to try to get back to our roots where we had all these different things open, florist shop, uh, jewelry store, men's wear, women's wear. We had a movie theater at some point. So mm -hmm. when people say, oh, we gotta be careful what we bring to the town, we don't, we don't wanna take it somewhere it's never been. Well, we have things that people don't even know we had back in the day. Um, so at any rate, um, I think that you can't be successful in doing any of the things that we wanna do in downtown without such a district. I think the arts, entertainment um, are crucial. This first Friday event that we're bringing on board is gonna have uh, live music every mm -hmm. first Friday of the month. And uh, so it's just, it's beyond critical. Okay. And more television, right? That's right. New okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, last question. What do you love most about Centerville? Oh, gosh. Um, I think it is the absolute perfect combination, combination excuse me, of history, culture, uh, agriculture, um, innovation, just all of these perfect little things that if they're, if they're nurtured, you know, appropriately, and we continue to invest in those things, then, um, you know, I, I think it certainly explains why after being out of the area for many years in my career, that when I had the choice of what to do permanently, it was, I want to come home to Centerville. I want to, I want to raise my family here. I want to continue to invest in the town that helped me become the person that I am. So great. Well, thank you for sharing all your answers. Thank you for joining us today. I know, I know it's a little bit of a stressful time, but I hope you have time to sit down and enjoy pumpkin chocolate chip cookies I will. while you're waiting <laughs> for the election. And I'll bring you guys some. There you go. Well, thank you for joining us, Eric. Thanks. I'm joined with Ashley Kaiser, and you're one of the people running for our seat in Centerville.
And we have a couple of questions we wanted to ask you. Awesome. Want to have some fun? Sure. Let's have some fun. I'm going to ask you the toughest question first. Is that okay? okay. Sure. What's your favorite cookie? My favorite cookie? Gotta be the Halloween Oreo. They taste different than other Oreos for sure. Fair enough. And a good time of year to have your favorite <laughs> yeah, cookie? Yeah, gotta stock up this All time right. of year. We'll get into the important <laughs> questions then. Why did you decide to run for council? You know, I moved back to Centerville a few years ago and saw a lot of hope and possibility in Centerville, but not a whole ton of action. And we had such a small town council at the time, only three people, made it really hard to get anything done. And so I volunteered to help expand the council to five people and then served on the town's committee to sort of make that happen. And I feel really strongly that with the expanded town council, it needs to reflect the diversity and the diverse viewpoints of our community. And so sort of a put my money where my mouth is person and I'm not gonna just keep saying, hey, something needs to change, something needs to change and not be part of the change. Right, and you touched on it, but let's get into uh, how long have you lived in Centerville? So I've lived in Centerville since 2018. Mm -hmm. I grew up here, I graduated from Queen Anne's. I lived in Annapolis. I had a short stint in Miami Beach, which I do not recommend to anyone and <laughs> made the decision to return home. I came back in 2018 to study for the bar and bought a home in Providence Farms and just never left, right. and so. Okay. And again, you, I feel like you're really getting ahead of us, but what can you tell me about your background that would help make you a good candidate for local government? Sure, so I'm an attorney. Okay. Um, I passed the bar in 2018. I do not practice as an attorney. I work as a government relations professional for a youth development nonprofit. And so in that role, I'm responsible for raising and helping manage over $50 million in federal and state grants. And so I have a lot of experience with the government budgeting process and sort of the way pass-through dollars work um, from every level of government. Prior to working um, where I work now, I was a contract lobbyist, which a lot of people shy away from, but <laughs> my clients were super diverse and interesting, and I represented a lot of municipalities and also a lot of developers, which again, people don't love, but I know how to navigate that planning and zoning process, the growth process, and the importance of community involvement in those things. And so I think my background is a really perfect fit for helping take the town to its next level. Sure. I'm sure you have millions of priorities, but what are the three priorities that if you're elected are going to be your focus? So I really think that the town of Centerville needs to have more events to bring the community together. I think, you know, Drink Maryland has been awesome. Some other things that have gone on have been awesome, but there aren't a ton of things that are for all ages. And so I want to see Centerville be a place that whether you're one like my son or you're 85 and living in Symphony Village, that there are things that you can do and that you can participate in our community. And so to that end, I'm already working with some others in the community to create a First Friday event, which starts on October 1st. And I want to see more of that, more engagement of the town government with its citizens. I also want to see further coordination with the businesses. My husband owns a business in town. The coordination between the businesses, the residents, and the town government couldn't be any lower than it is. And so I think there needs to be more of an intentional focus on economic development, more of an intentional focus on making sure that residents and businesses and the government work together. And then the third thing is transparency and communication. I live um, on Green Street and the new YMCA is being built, mm -hmm. you know, right there and got the shock of our lives when stuff started falling off our walls when that construction started, which, hey, I want the why, that's fine with me. But we need to have- But at what price? <laughs> right. We need to have community impact meetings. There should have been some sort of construction schedule sent to all of the residents in town that live near that project. And the same thing when other building happens. And so instead of me having to reach out to the town and ask, hey, what's going on? What's the schedule here? What can I expect? We need more proactive communication. And that can't just be a blurb in a water bill. We, we need to do more to reach out to the residents. And so I definitely want to be part of that solution. Gotcha. I think your first part, I might, might have touched on this next question, but would you be in favor of arts and entertainment section growth in downtown Centerville? So I'm in favor of any growth that makes sense. I want us to be super careful not to pigeonhole ourselves into one sort of growth and we're only going to allow X, Y, Z. Our downtown's not so big that there can be an arts district and a business district. Mm -hmm. and But right now every office is a lawyer office on pretty much every street. And so I think we do need growth. I think we have wonderful artists and entertainers here in town that deserve an opportunity to display their skills. But I don't know the best way that that should look. And I think for me, what I commit to is if I'm on the town council listening to folks, and if that's an idea people want to bring forward, then I want to be part of making that happen. Right. More TV. That's <laughs> what, <laughs> uh, what do you love most about Centerville? I love the small town feel of Centerville. You know, like I said, I did a short stint in Miami Beach and when I lived there, I kept telling my husband, I'm gonna meet our neighbors. I'm gonna bake them cookies for Valentine's Day and bring them to their houses. And I did that. And the first two houses I went to, the people cried because a neighbor had never uh, come to their door. 
and another house wouldn't come to their door. And I thought, wow, there's just literally no sense of community here. And when I came back to Centerville, you have that sense of community. When I had my baby, my neighbors were asking us, when can we make you dinner? How can we help? This has got to be so hard with the pandemic. I like living somewhere that you can still ask your neighbor for a cup of sugar. That when my neighbor um, was put into an assisted living facility, I brought dinner to her husband and we've become super close to him over the last year. And I just think it's great to live somewhere that a community lifts each other up. Right. So that is to me the people and that sense of community is the best thing about Centerville. And cookies helped. Right, and cookies. And cookies. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. I, I know it's coming up soon, so I know you're excited, but I hope you have time to still enjoy the Oreo Halloween cookies in the <laughs> yeah. meantime while we're getting ready. Maybe pass them out to a few people. It's <laughs> a great idea. But we wish you the best of luck as well as the other candidates, and uh, thank you for joining us. Awesome. Thanks so much. Of course. I'm joined with Tim McCluskey, another one of our candidates who we run for our town election in Centerville. And Tim? We're going to get some really hard questions. All Is right. that okay? I'm ready the, for The it. first one's the hardest. Okay. What's your favorite cookie? I know the answer, <laughs> but maybe the people at home don't know. My favorite cookie, and as you remember from last year, it's the nutmeg log. It's a family recipe that we had growing back for a long, long time, and it's like a little like shortbread cookie with a little bit of nutmeg flavoring in it, and it's got a, it's got a little bit of frosting on top, and then it's dipped in uh, what we call, I call them jimmies, but some people call them sprinkles. They're so good. And these are courtesy of your wife? They're actually from, they're from my mother's recipe and from, I think from her mother's recipe. So it goes back a long way. And like, that's like one of our favorite rituals as it gets to be Christmas time. My kids are like, let's make nutmeg logs. We go through, we have to go get a whole bunch of nutmeg, new nutmeg every single year. Awesome, awesome. All right, maybe we'll get to the real question. Perfect. Okay. So why did you decide to run for town council again? So I, um, I really feel that it's very important to have someone who's got a deep experience and knowledge and institutional knowledge as well. Uh, you know, I, I've been on the council now for 12 years, obviously. Um, before I was on the council, I spent two years on the planning commission. And one of the things that we were doing back in those days was we were writing the comprehensive plan or rewriting the comprehensive plan and updating it. And we're in the process of doing that right mm -hmm. now as well. So I think it's really important to, to have somebody on the council who's got a deep knowledge, not only of policy and where we've gone, but where we want to go and how we're going to get there. Um, I think it's great that we've got uh, you know, new ideas and, and new energy, um, but it's really, really critical that we have somebody there that's got the experience and that's got the knowledge and the know-how. You know, One of the things I, I really believe in is, is as a leader, uh, I believe in listening to all the voices, but I also believe in building consensus, and that's how I've been able to get so much done. Right. And we, we know that you've been involved in working in the town for a long time, but how long have you actually lived in Centerville? I moved, my wife and I and our kids moved to Centerville in January of 2006, so what is that, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell me about your background that would help make you a good candidate for local government? Okay. Well, I've, I've enjoyed a 25-year career as a recruiter. So my job essentially, some people call it a headhunter, right? My job is to, is to basically find uh, highly qualified uh, salespeople, technology sales and leadership people, and, and bring them into, uh, into companies. So, you know, I've got a great understanding of, of getting things done, of, of finding and qualifying uh, highly qualified people, you know, highly technical and, and very very strong salespeople, um, and because and also you know outside of my day job, I've been doing this job for a long time. So mm -hmm. I know the right questions to ask when it comes to do, negotiating, whether it comes to coming up with contracts. I know all the I, I've been there and I've done that. Right. And obviously you're up for re-election, so what would be your three priorities moving forward now? So the three most important things, I think, is we need to continue with our infrastructure upgrades, right? It's critical. Things have been left for so long. I mean, we've come so far, we've redone so many roads, so many underground utilities, but we still need to maintain doing that. We need to think about every single year continuing to do something. Uh, so that's number one. And part of that is we actually have received, uh, it's about four and a half million dollars in stimulus funding. One of the things that we're allowed to use that money for is infrastructure improvements, but it's got to be spent within the next three years. So we've really got a, a great opportunity to get a lot of stuff done, courtesy of this of this stimulus money, but the time is ticking, right? And we only can do so many things. So that was the first one. The second one is, as I had alluded to before, we're going through the rewrite of the comprehensive plan. Now, the comprehensive plan is kind of the guiding document of how the town is going to grow in the next 10 to 20 years. So the last one we, we wrote was, was uh, completed in 2009. Um, I was on the committee to do that we actually won an award from the state of Maryland for one of the best comp plans written. Great. Um, and you know, a lot has happened since then. That was back when Symphony Village and Northbrook and even Providence Farm were only about halfway built out. And so we've built out, we've grown, 
And so the other thing that we need to do is, is follow through and complete this, right? Every other thing that's going to happen in Centerville in the next 10 to 20 years is going to be built on and built around that comprehensive plan. I'm the only candidate that's, that's got the experience in working with that plan and working with, with that. The final thing is continuing to build on economic development, right? We have come so far. When I first started, there was really no downtown activities. There was no economic development to be said. I was able to get it into the budget. I actually helped found a group called Centerville Alive, which ended up becoming Maryland Main Street, which we now have a part-time Main Street manager. We've also got a part-time economic development manager. And, you know, I, I think part of it is you put in the policies to make the town more business friendly, to make the town more um, event friendly. And then you've got groups that are coming in. You know, last weekend we had uh, Shore Shakespeare came down to the wharf and it was, you know, totally independent but we made it nice for them to come and it was a fantastic experience. We've got car shows coming on. We've got a first Friday coming up. I mean, it's just great that, that we've put the policies in place to allow for these groups to come in and be successful. So more economic development, I think, is, is also great. Sure, and speaking of Shore Shakespeare, the, the events that we have going on, it kind of goes into my next question. Would you be in favor of an arts and entertainment section growth in downtown Centerville? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as I had said, when I had first started on the council, we didn't have any kind of economic development. We had the Christmas parade, and that was about it. And since then, we've really, really pushed to bring down more things. There's, there's you know, a public-private partnership, I think, that works out great, right? The public part is have the town policies to allow for things like Lawyer's Row or Broadway to get shut down as needed, right? We do that whenever we have a, a farmer's market. Uh, there's other groups that have come in. Uh, uh, that would shut down uh, Lawyer's Row as well. So, you know, it, and it's also like places like Bull and Goat, they've done First Fridays or Second Fridays, whatever they would call it as well. So encouraging those kinds of things, putting those policies in place has really been good to help. And I'm all for, you know, greater arts, greater entertainment, all of that stuff. Right. Now, obviously, you, you mentioned a lot. There's a lot to choose from. But what do you love most? about Centerville? <laughs> I, I love everything, right? I mean, when I, I obviously I didn't grow up here. Um, my wife and I moved here from Boulder, Colorado in 2006. We just found this town and just fell in love with everything about it, right? I, I just, I love the people. I love the history. I love the waterfront. I love what we've been able to do. You know, I, I'll walk down the street and it'll, you know, a 10 minute walk will take me 45 minutes because everybody will just stop and talk. So there's so many great things that we've been able to do in the past 12 years. And there's such a great future here as well. I mean, you, you just look at everything that's going on, right? Right outside this building, we've got a new YMCA that's coming in, right? It's taken a long time to get going, but now it's happening, and in the next couple of years, it's going to be fantastic. It's one of those things like, sometimes things take a long time to get going, but once they're here, it's like they've always been here. So I really just love the fact that we're able to get a lot of this stuff done. Right. Now, I thought you were going to say TV. I love QAC TV. <laughs> that is one of my favorite things, is, is being able to come down and, and talk with you guys on, on QAC TV. Well, Tim, I can't thank you enough for coming down. We wish you the best of luck. I know we're going to see you no matter what next Tuesday, and then we'll see you for a wonderful parade that we always do. Absolutely. We get to enjoy that together. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, you so for much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.